Here's a compilation of my favorite Octoprint plugins to make your 3D printing experience even better. I'm a big fan of Octoprint. I've been using it on all of my printers and I think it adds a lot to the 3D printing experience, especially when you consider plugins. Plugins are one of the best things ever. You take a base product that most people like and then you give a simple way for individuals to customize it to get the most out of it according to their interests. This video is a compilation of my favorite plugins. Hopefully you'll find something useful. If you don't, just skip it and go to the next one. In the description, I'll put a list of all of the plugins as well as any other information that I feel is relevant. Let's get straight to it. So here we are in Octoprint and I think it would probably be a good idea to talk about how to install plugins as the first thing we look at. So we're going to come to the settings here, which is a spanner icon. And then if we scroll down, we can see that we have a plugin manager. To find any of these things that I'm talking about, you're going to click on get more and then you're going to type in the name, which I'll have on the screen and in the description so you can find any of these ones that are of interest to you. I have an alphabetical list here, so let's go through these one by one. The first one is called auto scroll. And that's for when you're on the terminal page and it means you can scroll up away and it stops scrolling and that way you can see what happened earlier on and if you click the button it'll switch back to auto scroll and go to the bottom. It's handy to have this on some programs when you come up to check something that's come up previously it then scrolls down automatically and it's impossible to read it. So you have this button where you can toggle it on and off and it's just a nice little one to make the functionality a little bit better. Our next one is called bed visualizer and you have to have a BL touch and easy ABL or have a Mark III printer with the pin to probe to be able to use this one. Basically, it does auto bed leveling and then it spits out the data to make this nice graph here. Let's run the update. So when it's done, it will do a nice graph and you can inspect it. And sometimes it looks really crooked, but if you look at the scale, it's not really. So here I have about a 0.3 variance across. And even though the auto bed leveling will compensate for this, it's still a nice idea to use this to tune and get your bed as level as possible. Now you have to train it to know what G code to run by doing it in the settings. Let's go through that real quick. For the majority of printers, you're going to put in G28, G29 here. And that's going to home the machine and then run the auto bed leveling and retrieve the mesh automatically. If you have a Prusa Mark III or possibly a Mark II S, this is the code you need to run. G28W, then a G80, and then you put in, as they suggest, at bed level visualizer, and then a G81 after that. And that's what I needed to do after searching on GitHub to find out how to get it to work for Mark III. Our next one is the BL Touch plugin, and it's very simple. It adds this BL Touch section to your control panel. So you can do probe down, probe up, you can do the self test and release the alarm. All of these things are normally added to the LCD menu. It's just nice to have them here as well. Next one is called Cancel Objects, and it's quite a different one, but it's super handy. You might have seen the situation where you've got a plate full of various parts, and you're printing them, and then one comes loose. And you want to stop the entire print, but that would mean wasting all of the filament so far. The only option is to reprint the parts that broke off, and that means a lot of extra filament. That's where Cancel Objects will come in, and there's instructions for the three most popular slices. I'm going to follow Simplify 3D. You can see I've made three identical processes, and I assign them to each of these little towers. When you're printing, you'll see there's three Cancel buttons underneath that tab. And now we have a situation where a mystery person comes in with a set of pliers and pulls off one of the cubes mid print. Normally it would start to extrude and make spaghetti everywhere. Instead we switch back to Octoprint and we cancel that object. And then instantly as we look to our printer, it's now skipping the third object. Pretty amazing and a great way to save filament. It's just doing the first two as if nothing had ever been there for the third. Our next one is called Emergency Stop Button, and it's quite a handy one. I used to have on my Solid Doodle 2 a giant red button that I could mash if something was going wrong and it would instantly cut the power. So that adds this down the bottom here, and I believe there are two of these if you search for Emergency. This one puts it down the bottom of the sidebar. I think there's also one that goes up the top, which is probably a little bit more useful. Our next one is called Extra Distance Buttons, and you can see it in action here. It adds this 550. 100 and 150 distance here. So if you've got a large printer like this TiVo Tornado, I can put it to 150 and then move up that far with one click. Our next one is called Fan Speed Control. And once again on the Control tab, it is added. And you can see here we can manually set the speed 
and then we can turn it off and we can set it at any value that we want. Hit that button, it'll turn to that. Turn it off once again. Really handy to be able to control that all from the same tab. Now the next one is called floating navbar and you've been looking at it all along. The navbar is this bit across the top and when I scroll down, you'll notice that it stays there. Without that plugin, it will scroll off the top of the screen and you'll lose it. So it's just nice to keep these main controls on the screen no matter what. One that's quite subtle is called G-Code Editor and after you upload or slice your own G-Code, you have this button here that is the pencil. You click it and it will go to a G-Code Editor. This is really handy if you want to change something really simple, perhaps your temperature, without having to re-slice everything. So you can simply scroll down, change the line that you need to change, and then hit the save button. Now the next one is invisible until it goes into effect and it's called the heated timeout one. Let's go to the settings and see how it works. So here we are in the settings and basically if you turn on a heater and then forget, after the amount of time that you input here, it will automatically turn them off and put a little notification in the corner. If you're like me, sometimes you'll turn on the hot end, ready to change the filament and then forget about it. So it's just a little safety net to assist with that. Our next plugin is called Navbar Temp Plugin and you can see it in action across the top here in the navbar. One thing that I didn't like about standard Octoprint is that you can only access the temperature by coming to here and it's really nice to have the graph to monitor changes and how stable your PID settings are for your hot end and bed but I do miss having that information without switching to this tab. So it adds it up to the top here for the tool, the bed and a nice little bonus is to have it for the Raspberry Pi, so it'll tell you the internal temperature of that, which you can monitor and add cooling fans or heat sinks or whatever you need to to keep that stable. Our next one I've covered before and we'll be covering again, and it's probably one of the most exciting ones here, and it's called Octolapse. I'm not going to go into much depth here, but instead I'll just roll an Octolapse for you. I'm not going to go into any more detail here, instead I'll link in the card up above to my previous video and make the promise that my comprehensive guide is coming very shortly. It's going to cover all of the settings you need to do, all of the little tweaks to get it working correctly. It's going to recommend cameras that I've tested back to back and it's going to have 3D printed mount to get those cameras attached to the most common types of printers. Our next plugin is called Tab Order and it's another subtle one but it lets you choose which tabs show in what order across the top here. Let's have a look at the settings. So as you can see, you can assign custom icons. You can type in tooltips for when you hover over them. You can assign the order of all possible tabs. You can move them up and down and anything unassigned will appear down the bottom here for you to put into place. It lets you prioritize the tabs that you use most often and stop them being hidden in a little drop down if they don't fit. Speaking of not fitting, a lot of people asked on a previous Octoprint video of mine, how do I get all of this stuff as wide as I do? Because by default, this interface has two big borders on the side and that limits how much you can see on the screen. Well, the plugin that you want is called Themify. So Themify will intercept the CSS or cascading style sheet of anything on our web interface and let us inject our own CSS to style it however we like. If you click to open up these advanced options, if you want to have it how I have it, here are the settings. So please pause the screen and then enter them the same on your one. You'll notice the top two aren't enabled so there's no point copying those, but Dot span 8, which is the class span 8, the width is set to 70%, and that is this right hand panel behind. The overall container width is set to 100. Span 4, which is the bit on the left here, is set to 25%, and then the row is set to have a margin left of 0, and that just helps things fit a little bit nicer. On the subject of appearance, you'll notice that I have four tabs for four printers open here. So I have my Ender 3, Tivo Tornado, Prusa Mark 3 and GTEC ATEM-M which is currently under review. You'll notice each one has the name here in a different colour. That also appears in the tab so you can see which one is which comfortably when you've got a bunch of tabs open. Let's have a look at how to do that. We come to settings and then we scroll down to appearance. This is where you can put in the title of your instance of Octoprint. If you have multiple ones running, you can even pick your colour here to differentiate them. When you're done, hit save. Now that leaves us with one more and that is this separate webcam tab. 
So by default, your webcam will appear above controls, but for me, I wanted to keep it separate so it shows in its own window. And the reason for that is that I'm running 1080p for my webcam instead of the normal 640 by 480, and that slows down things a great deal. It adds a lot of latency. So I figured if I could separate it, then performance would be improved. And I'm not gonna have any stuttering while I print or anything like that. You can see here it says keyboard controls active. So if you have your mouse over, you can still press the keyboard buttons to be able to move the printer back and forth and control it in that way. Now there's a couple more that I didn't mention there and that is the full blown slicer as well as the slicer plugin which I've covered in a separate video previously. Well that's my favorite set of plugins but I'd love to know yours. Please leave a comment as to your favorite one. Maybe there's something vital that I've missed or one of the ones that I've covered that you think is just amazing. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.